Three, two, one. Creating this hit took an air pressurizer, a gnarly prosthetic, and a special blood formula. Making actors project, gush, and burst out blood on camera isn't just about gore. These bloody scenes require careful research and artistic flair. To find out how they do it, we went to Brett Schmidt and Greg Pikulski, the special effects makeup artists at SPFX Studio. They've created graphic injuries for mob dramas like The Irishman, medical shows like New Amsterdam, and action movies like Sicario Day of the Soldado. It all starts with the actual prosthetics. The hardest part of creating wounds is building the look of depth. Prosthetic makeup is an additive process, so you can only add, you can't take away. But when you look at a wound, you're supposed to be looking into the body. The prosthetic needs to be thick enough to create that effect. But it also has to work into the rest of the person's body. And that's why a lot of times for effects, that have you know, lacerations or even bullet holes. You'll actually have a prosthetic that is an entire torso. Just to create the effect of this small bullet wound in Sicario Day of the Soldado, Brett and Greg had to sculpt a prosthetic that covered most of the actor's shoulder. For this laceration prosthetic from New Amsterdam, they were able to build up a thickness that subtly ramps up toward the laceration. Because this scene required a lot of blood, the prosthetic also had to be thick enough to hide a medium-sized vinyl tube. For smaller wounds, Brett and Greg might use one of these tiny tubes. These can be hidden in actors' hair or even a pair of glasses, like they did in this scene from Sicario Day of the Soldado. To hide the larger tubes, however, they had to sculpt a special channel in the prosthetic. You don't want to put a tube in, you know, that creates a bulge or anything like that. That'll give away the effect. On set, they hid the rest of the tube underneath and behind the actress. How the blood comes out of the tube depends on what you use to power it. In this scene, a piece of shrapnel has hit a patient's artery. To create the kind of spray that results from an artery rupture, the blood has to be released at a high pressure out of a centralized location, like you see in this test run with water. They get that effect using this little device. This is a tiny little garden sprayer that's usually used for spraying various chemicals on your flowers or whatnot. After they prime the line with some pre-existing blood, they let out the blood in a pulsing motion to emulate real arterial bleeding, which coincides with a person's heartbeat. The color and type of fake blood is also key. Arterial blood is fresher and more oxygenated than the blood in your veins, so this scene calls for a more vibrant light red. A lot of times what we look for in the color of blood is like that orangey, yellowy hue. For an older or partly dried wound, they'd use this brownish-red gel, which has a thicker texture to emulate scabbing. But for fresh injuries like this one, the most convincing fake typically contains compounds called opacifiers, which make it opaque so it looks better on screen. Because anybody who's ever seen a really cheesy horror movie will see that clear, like, fruit punch colored looking blood that is dripping off the end of a machete or something, which looks like absolute trash. While some wounds have a more focused source of blood, in other injuries, you'd want to see the entire length of the wound bleeding. Like a throat slit or a slash to the abdomen. So basically on this one, we're going to try to get, like, a, a nice curtain of blood instead of just one, you know, centralized location. I'm just cutting little slits in the tube. This will create the more horizontal flow you see here in the test run they're doing with water. The prosthetic can then be glued onto the actor's body and blended in. To get a slow, continuous curtain of blood seeping out of an abdomen slash, they went with a simple 60 milliliter syringe. Put the tube on the end of this, fill it up with blood, and you can just let it bleed slowly. The team also had to adjust the type of fake blood for this injury opting for one with ingredients called surfactants, which prevent it from beading over a rubber surface like the prosthetic. Real blood doesn't do that. It smears, it leaves trails without any beadings. What about when you don't want a continuous flow of blood, just one dramatic burst? These air hits are something you might see in a samurai film or a Quentin Tarantino fight scene. For this effect, Brett and Greg went with what they call a pressure popper. This flat piece goes up against the wardrobe, and then the, the tubing runs you know, down the wardrobe, down the leg, down whatever it is. This air chamber releases all the air through a quick release valve, which if they set the pressure high enough, it'll just vaporize the blood. It took a couple of test runs to get the effect as dramatic as we wanted. 
All right, so we'll do more pressure, but. Maybe 40? Yeah. Three, two, one. The key was using a lot of blood. For the full effect, though, you'd need to see this in slow-mo. These decisions are affected by the style of the edit, too. If they know a hit will only be shown with a quick reveal, like in a fast-cutting action sequence, Greg and Brett will lean towards going bigger with the effect. If you do something more on the subtle side, especially when it's atomized or coming out in a stream, unless it's backlit, a lot of the times you won't see it. The blood will get lost. Equally dramatic is the classic gunshot to the head. But that effect calls for a more concentrated blood hit and an attention to texture. To mimic the effect of a bullet, they attach the pressurizer to a blood cannon, a system powered by air that doesn't need to be attached to a prosthetic. Blood cannons allow for more control over where the blood goes, perfect when you want to land on the wall in a specific spot behind an actor. And since we wanted a thicker hit of blood against the wall, they added copious amounts of one of their favorite ingredients, Ultra Slime, a product made from a mystery recipe that gives everything the stringy consistency of mucus. If you've ever seen like Ghostbusters or any 80s movie ever, it's the stuff that makes everything look disgusting. It's so stringy that you actually have to cut it with scissors. Introducing these new textures took some trial and error though. One. Two, three. Too much slime, and we didn't get enough of a splatter. It looks like just popped up a lung. So they revised the formula and added pieces of banana to emulate brain bits. Three, two, one. I think a banana bit hit my head. I think a banana bit went over my eye. To make this last one extra dramatic, Greg used a trick from Saving Private Ryan. Watch it slowly. A lot of the, the actors who get shot, usually like in a scene where there's a lot getting shot, as they get shot, they like spit blood out because it's just another element. It might be over the top, but sometimes that's the point. Anything from horror to medical and anything in between. When you're making a movie, you have that, you have that creative freedom to kind of push things and, you know, and have fun with it.